Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Chelsea and today I am going to be giving you a Utila travel guide. So what I'm going to be talking about in this video is how to get to Utila, the dive shops that they have there, the beaches, the bars, the restaurants, things to do and see. Also how much you're likely to spend in Utila and then also I'm going to tell you how much I spent when I was in Utila. So I was in Utila for two months. I had actually only planned to stay there for about two weeks. I had thought about doing my dive master but I was just thinking it would be too expensive to do it all on one trip. So my initial plan was to do my open water up until my rescue diver and then to go back another time and do my dive master or do my dive master somewhere else. But those plans soon changed when I realised just how cheap Utila was. The first thing that I'm going to talk through is the dive shops in Utila. Okay, so I dove with a shop called Paradise Divers. I would highly recommend Paradise Divers. If you do go there, then mention my name while you're booking it to the owner, Josh, and you will be able to get a discount. But what I paid for my dives and what you will pay if you don't have a discount is for your open water, you will pay $258. That includes the course and the accommodation, which is absolutely insane. It's so cheap. It's literally the cheapest that I've seen it anywhere in the world. Um, like in Mexico, I saw prices for about $450 for the open water course and that didn't include accommodation. So to have your accommodation and the course included for $258 is just insane. And the advanced open water costs the same, it's another $258. However, if you do the open water and advanced open water together, then you will pay $495 for both again including all of your accommodation. For your rescue diver that is again $258 plus $80 for your emergency first response. However if you do both your rescue diver and your emergency first response with paradise divers then you will get both of those courses for $320. So you do need your emergency first response to be able to do the rescue diver. However if you have another first aid certification then I don't think you need to do it, just something to do with oxygen and administration, unless you already have that as well. So again, that includes your accommodation. And then the Dive Master course at Paradise Divers costs $920, again, including accommodation for the entire time you're there and including unlimited fun dives. So when you finish your open water, advanced open water and rescue diver, if you have never been diving before, you will probably have 17 logged dives, um, assuming that you have actually been logging your dives. And then to get your dive master or to start your dive master, you need 40 logged dives. So at Paradise Divers, they will actually give you all of those dives between your rescue diver and your dive master for free um, or included in the dive master package. Obviously, you have to pay for the dive master package to get those dives for free. Um, but that is an insane deal. And that is actually what made me decide to say to do my dive master, because I thought that I would have to pay for each of those fun dives. But they were all included in the course, which is insane. So in total, I spent about $1,700 is about like 1,002 or 300 pounds so really really good price to do from my open water to my dive master including accommodation it's just insane <laughs> however other than paradise divers there are six or so other dive shops on the island there are probably more than this but these are the ones that I know of there is one called parrots which is very similar pricing to paradise divers it's $30 more for each course so instead of $258 it's $289 captain morgan's is the same at least for the open water I don't know the other prices for captain morgan's but that is also $289 for the open water I don't know if parrots and captain morgan's include accommodation but I would assume that they probably do but I can't say that for sure you would have to message them to find out the next cheapest is Alton's which is $295 for your open water the next is underwater vision which is $299 then you have UDC which is Utila Dive Center that's $349 and BICD which is Bay Islands College of Diving which is $369 so that's the most expensive dive shop on the island out of these ones I'm pretty sure there's a few more that do like tech and specialty courses but like these are the main seven shops yes I'm pretty sure all of them include accommodation but I can't be 100% sure I know UDC does because I was actually going to go there um, to dive because they were the company that I messaged first and they were talking about how the accommodation is included and I was thinking $350 that's insane and then my friends that I already had from previous traveling trips they were diving at Paradise Divers and it's a hundred dollars cheaper it's it's just insane it's so cheap so also with most of the dive shops what they will include in their prices is the course the accommodation and then normally you'll get two fun dives at the end of each course yeah it's 
definitely a really good place to go diving, so cheap in Utila. There are also free diving shops, so there is one called, I'm pretty sure it's just Free Dive Utila, I believe it's about $300 for the whatever the equivalent is to the open water, just like your beginner free diving qualification. But there is another dive shop in Utila for free diving, but I couldn't find anything about it online and I can't remember the name of it. It's next to a little cafe called Josie's. Um, so when you're in Utila, maybe go and have a look at both of the free diving shops and then you can make a decision on which one you would prefer to dive at. I don't know much about them because I have not done free diving. I had planned to, but ended up doing my dive master instead. Okay, so the next section is how to get to Utila. So the most common way to get to Utila would be to fly into San Pedro Sula or to get the bus from whichever country you're coming from to San Pedro Sula and then get a bus from San Pedro Sula to La Ceiba. Once you're in La Ceiba, you can get the ferry straight to Utila. Um, so it's cheaper if you buy the ferry tickets online. I'll have that link in the description for you. They should cost anywhere from about 10 to 18 pounds depending I think on the season that you go in. I think when I arrived in Utila I was sort of a bit more in the peak season and then when I left it was off peak because it was rainy season so on, on my way there I paid about 18 pounds for my ticket and then on the way back I think I paid about 10 pounds for my ticket. So yeah I don't really know why it changed but I was not mad about it. <laughs> but yes it should cost about that if you pay online in advance. The bus from San Pedro Sula to La Ceiba I think costs around I want to say a hundred and something glimpiras. I can't remember exactly how much it cost but it was very cheap so yes it's about a four hour drive. Well it's about like three to three and a half hours but the bus takes a little bit longer because it's got all the extra stops and then also they stopped for lunch. I don't know if every bus company does this um, but yeah there was no toilet on the bus so I think that's why they felt like they kind of had to stop. Another way to get to Utila is you can actually fly directly into Utila. This is a very expensive way to do it, but it's very easy. It is a very small airport, so you will be taking a very, very small plane. And then the other option is to fly into the capital, which is Tegu... Te <laughs> I can't even say this place. Tegucigalpa, however you pronounce it. People tend to just call it Tegus. Um, so you can fly into there, which is the capital of Honduras, and then get the bus from Tegus to La Ceiba, which is about seven or eight hours. So it is about double the length. I don't know how much that would cost you but obviously if you are coming from Nicaragua um, then maybe it would make sense to do that route rather than flying up to San Pedro Sula. I don't know if you can get a bus straight from Nicaragua over to La Ceiba. I imagine you would probably have to go through Tegus though. Yes and then once you're in La Ceiba again you can get the ferry over to Utila. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the beaches in Utila. Okay, so there are a few beaches in Utila. They're not amazing beaches. Utila isn't really known for its beautiful pristine beaches. It is more so known for scuba diving and its beautiful coral reefs. But it does have some beaches. If you start at the far side of the bay you have Bando Beach. So Bando Beach is actually a private beach. It's owned by a little restaurant bar place. Sorry if you can hear this spoon. I'm so sorry. Sometimes you will have to pay to enter the beach. So normally it depends if there's even anyone at the door who's collecting money or it depends who it is. It depends if you tell them that you're only going to the restaurant. They might not charge you but they might still charge you. If they trust you, I don't know. But if they do charge you, it's about 40 lempiras. But I like Bando Beach because, as, as I say, you've got the cafe there if you want to buy any drinks um, or any food if you get a little bit hungry while you're on the beach. I prefer this beach if you just want to kind of chill, sit in a deck chair or lay on the sand. It's not very sandy. There is also a volleyball court, but it's not the best for swimming. So if you're more into swimming, then I would suggest probably the public beach. And yeah, I don't know. I just like it because it's got the restaurant there. So I love to get the fried pickles and yeah, it's just handy. There's also some toilets, which is nicer than having to pee in the sea if you don't want to go in the sea. So the next beach that I know of is Underwater Vision. I never actually went to Underwater Vision to use the beach, but there is one there. So if you're staying there, then you can obviously use it. If you're not staying there, I assume you can probably use it, but I never did. There is the public beach, which on Google Maps is called Chepe's Beach. So this is free to use. You can just go show up and spend as long as you like there. Uh, there are no toilets, there is no bar. There are nearby bars but there's not ones that are actually like attached to the beach. There are fish that bite here though <laughs> so just be warned. It doesn't hurt but like 
they surprise you a little bit. It's not a great beach but it's a beach and then a little bit further down you have coral view so this is a dive center i don't think that they do courses which is why i didn't include them but they do lots of fun diving they have like a pool and i think there's like a, some sort of beach there but i never actually went to coral view surprisingly like this is where a lot of the shore dives are done but yeah i never actually went to coral view in the whole two months that i was there the next place isn't really a beach but it has like a really nice sort of dock it's a beachy bar it's called blue bayou so like the bar is in the sand which is why i'm sort of including it but i wouldn't ever go there to like sunbathe or swim um it's just a nice place to watch the sunset and uh, sometimes they have live music there it's just a really nice atmosphere and then the last beach that i want to talk about is neptunes you actually have to get a boat to neptunes so where blue bayou is just opposite there is a little dock and you can go there to take a boat to Neptunes. This boat is free normally. I tried to go to Neptune several times, but it was either closed on the days that I wanted to go. I think it was a Monday and Tuesday that it's closed. So yes, it was either closed or it rained on the days that I wanted to go because I was, as I say, there during rainy season. Or you had to pay. So th there was a Honduran holiday while I was there and they took advantage of this and made everyone who was going to Neptunes pay 350 lempira, which is quite a steep price to go to Neptunes and yes you do get the money back because you get it in like vouchers to pay for the food and drinks but me and my friend weren't planning on eating there other than the buffalo cauliflower and we didn't want to drink anything so we thought that that was a bit of a steep price to pay for some cauliflower so we were going to go back another day but it was closed and yeah so I never actually made it to Neptunes but I've heard it's very nice there and I have been there for scuba diving I just have not been to the actual beach area Okay, so then for restaurants and bars, I'm going to start again from Bando Beach. So, as I say, you have got Bando Beach. They sell all sorts of drinks here um, and they have a menu. So they have like sides like fried pickles. That's all I ever ate there, but they do have mains as well. It is kind of pricey. And then on Thursdays, they have a burrito night. So you can get yourself a burrito for, I believe it's like 150 lempiras if you don't get any of like the like falafel or the meat. I'm pretty sure I paid 170 because I got mine with falafel. Or was it the guacamole that you had to pay for? I can't remember, but I think I paid about 170 lempiras, which is kind of pricey. It's about five or six pounds. So for food in Utila, it's kind of on the pricey side for a burrito, but it was still a decent burrito. I wouldn't say it was the best burrito I ever had, but it was decent. So the next place that you have down is RJ's. It's a barbecue place. It's not very vegan or vegetarian friendly at all, but you can get sides there. There's like, you can get a plate of five sides and they're pretty decent. Some of them are vegan. I only ever got the salad because I'd actually eaten dinner the day that we went to RJ's. And actually the salad was really nice. They put pickles in it, which made me so happy. <laughs> but they have also real baked beans, like Heinz. I don't know if it's Heinz, but like actual baked beans because they had beans on the menu and I was like no I don't fancy refried beans and my friend got the plate of five sides and they were actual baked beans and I miss baked beans so much so if you're missing baked beans go to RJ's they have some the next place is underwater vision I think it's on Wednesdays maybe Thursdays they have a barbecue night I'm pretty sure it's on the same day as karaoke though so it must be a Wednesday they have a barbecue again it's not so vegan friendly but they do again have some sides which two of them are vegan friendly and then the other one is vegetarian it's like a potato salad so I mean, me and my friend shared the side, so we're really good. And then Underwater Vision do actually have quite a few really good vegan options. Well, I say really good. Not really good, but like decent. Uh, they have like a roasted veg panini. They have a vegan burger, which wasn't the best, but it wasn't bad. They have fried pickles there, which are not as good as the ones at Bando. Yeah, they have got quite a few ve vegan and vegetarian options. They also have chip spice. I really like the chip spice, but I wasn't such a big fan of the chips from Ban uh, from Underwater Vision. So maybe go and buy a portion of the chips, ask for extra chip spice, and then take it with you and put it on your chips from other places. That's what my friend did. So on Wednesday nights at Underwater Vision, they have a karaoke night. Highly recommend the karaoke night. I loved it. We went most weeks and we always sung a song, which was always fun. And then I'm pretty sure on Thursday nights they have a quiz. It might not be Thursdays, it might be like Saturdays or something, but I'm pretty sure they have like a quiz night on Thursdays or Saturdays. And then on Fridays, I think they have pizza night. The next place is Josie's. This is a brunch cafe. It's so lovely. I absolutely love the food from Josie's. It's 
not the cheapest place considering that for the avocado toast I think it's 95 lempiras and you only get one slice so it's about three pounds for one slice of avocado toast but that toast does come with an egg or you can swap that out for tomatoes if you don't eat eggs and then um, also comes with fruit but yes Josie's have lots of really good brunch foods I only ever had the avocado toast from there but I did go quite a few times but I just really enjoyed the avocado toast but my friends had a couple of the other things and they all really liked them so yes I highly recommend Josie's Josie as well is really nice as well she's very friendly and very welcoming but yeah highly recommend Josie's the next place is Seabreakers so this is an Italian restaurant quite set back the guy who owns it is Italian and he makes the pasta from scratch I don't know for a fact that it's vegan I don't know if he uses egg in it but I just never asked I just ate it each day they do like one type of pasta I only ever had the bolognese and they do like a meat version and a meat-free version so obviously I always got the meat-free version and that's 150 lempiras so again it's a little bit more on the pricey side because it's not a big portion but it's a really nice place to go they also have pizzas as well but I never tried the pizzas from there so I don't know what they like I assume because the guy's Italian that they're very good pizzas but as I say I never had one the next place is Camilla's bakery so uh, during the day it's a bakery and then I think past like 5 or 6 p.m. it is a pizza place called Pizza Nut. So from Camilla's Bakery they do apparently really nice breakfasts but I never actually went there. They have really really good bread. I used to buy the bread from there and then I don't know what the pizzas are like in the evening but they seemed at decent prices. The next place is the brewery. So every Wednesday night they have burger night and oh my gosh, the burgers are amazing. They're very small. Um, so don't expect to necessarily be full after you've eaten it, but they're amazing. If you ask for extra pickles, they will give you extra pickles <laughs> and they're so good. Normally on the burger nights, they have a tie dye night as well. So you can buy a shirt from the brewery or the pub as it's now called and you can tie dye it. So the shirt is 300 lempiras, which is about nine pounds. And then other nights they have a really good like Mexican vegan bowl. I really like it. It's not the best like chili that I've ever had, but it was really good. They now do breakfast there as well. So uh, you can get things like, I think they do vegan smoothie bowls and then they do like maybe waffles and pancakes. Don't hold me to that because I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure they do things like that. The next place is Mermaids. So I absolutely love Mermaids. I got everyone at Paradise into going to Mermaids um, because I would always go there. It's sort of like a buffet. It can add up if you get a lot of food, but it's also a really good price for the amount of food that you can get. I don't know how much it costs for the meat dishes because obviously I never had those, but at the back, most of the things there are vegetarian. There is one that is like a chicken fried rice, so obviously stay clear of that if you don't eat meat um, but like they have for vegetarians and vegans they have like a like plain rice I think it is like a boiled rice uh, they have like um, some they're not mushy beans but just some beans in like a bean sauce um, they have a bean rice they have a pasta oh the pasta is so good they have like veggies they do come in like a butter sauce I didn't ask if it was vegan but I'm pretty sure it would be margarine because it's cheaper um, and I have a friend who's allergic to dairy but she ate the vegetables and she didn't have an issue so I think it must be margarine um, but as I say like when I was in Utah I sort of took things with a pinch of salt and ate them even if I wasn't 100% sure that they were vegan um, they do have garlic bread there as well, which again, I'm pretty sure is vegan, but I'm not actually sure it could be butter. But yeah, basically like each of the sides are 45. The garlic bread I think was only like 10 or 20 lempiras. Yes, I highly recommend going to Mermaids. They've also got a little bit of a shop next to it as well. So if you need any groceries while you're there, then you can get them. So the next place is Mama Rosa. So they actually have two Mama Rosas. They have number one and number two. I think it's number one is the bigger one, which has more choice. But I used to always go to the number two because they were closer to paradise. And I knew the woman in there. She was very lovely and she always smiled when I came up to the counter so yes I tended to just get the vegetable balayada or the single balayada with avocado so if you don't know what a balayada is it's just a tortilla with some bean paste normally they put cheese in it but I asked for it without cheese and then I added avocado so if I got the tortilla the beans with the avocado that would cost me 25 lempiras if I got it with this salad in it as well I think it was 50 to have with avocado and 40 without the avocado and then you can add like a spicy sauce to it as well I did not realize this I got told this literally as I was leaving Utila sometimes a lot of the places use pig fat to cook the beans so maybe check this I 
stopped eating balayadas after about a month because I got sick of them, <laughs> I ate too many. So I never checked by the time that I'd found out, but um, yes, maybe double check this if you are vegetarian. I didn't know, as I say, until right at the end, but that is something to look out for that apparently a lot of places in Central America cook beans with pig fat, so be careful of that and I will now think to ask about that as well. The next place is Mango Inn, which on Tuesday nights you can get two for one pizzas. It does take a long time for the pizzas to come, so just be aware of that and maybe try and get there earlier so that there's not a big crowd of people. The next place is Paradise Divers. They have a restaurant there and they actually have a lot of vegetarian and vegan food. Obviously, if you just tell them that you're vegan, then they will make it vegan for you, like take out the sauce or take out the cheese. The next place is Rethink. I absolutely love Rethink. It is a sustainable cafe. They have a lot of vegetarian and vegan options there. The ladies who work there are so lovely. If you're nice to them, they will remember your name and they will just make you feel at home. They're just so lovely. I highly recommend Rethink. The next place is Hotspot. The food in Hotspot is also amazing. They also have lots of vegetarian and vegan food. They actually have a vegan plate where you can choose, I think it's four things, maybe five, to make up your own vegan plate. So it's really good. They have a lot of vegan options. So yes, those two cafes are really good. Rethink opens at 6am and it closes at 2 p.m. every day except Thursdays they're closed and then Hotspot I don't actually know the opening hours but I think it's very similar. And then the last place is Mr. Buddha. This is a place where you can obviously get Buddha bowls um, and sushi. So yes I recommend this for the sushi. I did not realize how much I miss sushi until I went to Mr. Buddha and I was like wow now I want to go here every day. Um, the sushi is very good there but it is very expensive to eat at Mr. Buddha so obviously I didn't go too often but yes once I discovered it I wanted to go there all the time. <laughs> Okay, so then bars. So we have Blue Bayou, which is right at the end of the bay. This is where I said about you can go to watch the sunset from the dock. It's so pretty over there. And often in the evenings, you can see eagle rays. Oh, they're so beautiful. Like when you see an eagle ray, it's just like, oh. They're beautiful. You can buy a drink, go sit on the dock, watch the sunset. It's absolutely stunning over there. Do take bug spray if you're going for sunset, especially if you're there during rainy season because you will regret it if you're not wearing bug spray at sunset time, but that's anywhere on the island. So the next bar that I'm going to mention is Tranquila. This is two docks to the left of Paradise Divers and every Tuesday they have Tequila Tuesday so this is where they give you free shots of tequila for an hour. I think it's between seven and eight but it does change some weeks depending on if there's a holiday or like they might not be doing it because of the holiday or they might randomly change the time so double check but when I was there majority of the weeks it was seven till eight p.m. I mean you literally just get free tequila for an hour so <laughs> go make the most of that. On Saturday they have Shots Saturday I think I went there like once and not purposely for the shots, but they're 30 Lempiras for a shot, which is just under a pound, so pretty decent price. The next place is Vinyl. This is the dock next to Paradise Divers. And every Thursdays they have ladies night. So between six and seven, again, double check the timings because they might have changed. But when I was there, it was between six and seven, they give free drinks to ladies. There are just obviously select drinks. You can't get like absolutely anything off the menu. Um, and you do also have to bring your own cup. So I brought my own little cup when I was in New Taylor. <laughs> it's so cute. We got them from, I will circle it on a map because I can't remember the exact name of the place that we got them, but they have like loads of random little bits in that shop. And these cups were 25 Lempira, which is like less than a pound. The next place is La Cueva. This is opposite Paradise Divers and they play very cheesy music. I only really went there like once, I think. Yeah, it only opened again, I think a month after I arrived because it was closed, I think because of COVID. So I didn't go there too many times. I went there once, but I always loved listening to the cheesy music that they played. The next place is Cliff's Sports Bar. At the moment is a stripy colored building I don't know if he's gonna paint it or what because it was it literally opened less than a week before I left and he does like after party sort of evenings but also shows sports so if there's a specific sport thing that you want to watch whether it's the boxing or 
the football or whatever, but he will probably be showing it. Uh, you could probably ask him to put something specific on if there's something that you want to watch. But yes, he also does like after parties. So when everywhere else closes around midnight, he will be open until who knows what time in the morning. And yes, he was very excited about being the after party place. Um, so yes, head over to Cliff's Sports Bar for an after party. On Wednesdays, as I say, at Underwater Vision, they have karaoke. And then on another day in the week, they have a quiz night. And then finally, we have Bando Beach again. They obviously are a bar as well, but they also have parties every now and again. Not too often. I think in the two months that I was there, they had two parties. One, I have no idea. It was completely random. The next one was a Halloween one. And then I think about a week after I left, they had like a full moon party or something like that. So maybe like once a month they do a party there, but yeah, they're good parties normally go through the night so if you are a party person then try and see if they have a party that's happening at Bando Beach. Hi guys so I'm just editing the video now and I thought to mention a place called Tree Tannic. It is absolutely beautiful. They I think occasionally have a party there for like when people pass their instructor courses or things like that. It's not very common but if you go there during the day, it's just a really beautiful place. It's made out of recycled cups and things like that um, to make everything. It's just really beautiful. Um, so I definitely recommend going there during the day. It was very quiet, like no one was around. I don't know if we just went on like a weird day or a weird time, but yeah, I don't know if it ever gets busier during the day, but it was really nice to just walk around and have a look. Okay, so then other things to do and see in Utila. I would highly recommend going to Pumpkin Hills. So there is a little like cafe bar thing at Pumpkin Hills. You can just sit there on a little picnic bench and have a look at the view of the ocean. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's, there's a little bay there, a little bit of a beach-ish thing. But when I went, I think the tide was in, so we couldn't really go to the beach but the main thing to do here is to climb up the hill so it's like pretty much the only proper hill in Utella. it takes about like 10 minutes to walk up it so if you get dropped off by a taxi the taxi is 100 lempiras per person so it's a fair bit it's about a 40 minute walk from the bay we did walk home um but to get there we just got a taxi because it was getting later in the day but yeah if you get dropped off where there is the little cafe then if you say are looking at the ocean with the cafe behind you you turn left walk for about 10 20 meters and then there's a path that goes up kind of looks like a path kind of doesn't really look like a path it's probably the path <laughs> that you should be walking on so you go up there there are little posts sort of along the way but not really you just kind of have to find your way up it takes about 10 minutes to walk up and then walk along to the left and then there's a big, is it a lighthouse? Like, I don't really know what it is, but anyway, you can climb up with the ladder and then you get a view of the entire island. Like you can see the whole of Utila if you climb up this thing, this little tower. It's beautiful. You can see the ocean in every direction. It's just beautiful. So yes, I highly recommend going to Pumpkin Hills. You can do it for sunset. We left just before sunset because we didn't really fancy doing that hike back down in the dark because we were all wearing flip-flops or no shoes. Uh, so we really didn't fancy doing that in the dark. But if you have proper shoes on and a torch, then I would maybe recommend staying up there for sunset because I imagine it would be very beautiful up there. Or even going up there for sunrise as well. Hello, editing Chelsea again. I forgot to mention to really good places to visit while you're in Utila is the Keys, so Sandy Key and Water Key. For Sandy Key you'll probably need a big group of people. If you're diving with a certain dive shop they might organise a trip. If you're with Paradise Divers you can ask them and they might try and organise a trip. To Sandy Key is basically a big house on a private island. Rent it out for the night. So if you can get a big group of people then it's not going to be too expensive per person. Uh, we paid about $30 per person, 30 US dollars uh, for the night. And yeah, you just spend the night on a private island, is amazing. And then Water Key is somewhere where you go during the day, there's no accommodation on the island, so it's just a day trip. I think we paid $15 to go to Water Key. And yeah, you just can go there and chill, it's it's a nice beach area. Yeah, it's just a fun day trip. So if you're with Paradise Divers, you can ask them to try and organise those trips for you. I'm sure other dive shops probably do the same thing, but I obviously wasn't with them, so I don't know. Um, and then there is a place outside Bush's supermarket which has tours that you can do so you can go there and have a look as well. They organise trips to Ward's Key and probably a few other places on the island. But yes, sorry I forgot to mention those. There is also a little chocolate factory in Utila. I didn't go to this but 
it's there if you want to visit it. I was just sort of focusing on getting my dive master and then whenever I wasn't studying for my dive master I was like working or editing videos or whatever so or just chilling in a hammock or sunbathing or whatever but yeah I didn't really explore much while I was in Utila. Okay so now I'm going to talk about Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi on the island of Utila is pretty poor. It's not good. I won't lie to you. I teach English online and I really struggled sometimes but for the most part I was okay. So for the first week or so I didn't have a sim card because I didn't feel like it was necessary. There was always, always Wi-Fi. Except there wasn't. So often there are like power cuts on the island where everything just goes down and there's nothing you can do about it. So I would recommend getting a sim card if you need Wi-Fi for your job or whatever. I'd recommend getting a sim card that has enough data that you could use that if the Wi-Fi is down. It's not the best connection, but it's better than nothing. Private Wi-Fi is the best kind of Wi-Fi. So if you rent an apartment, the Wi-Fi is going to be best at your apartment than anywhere else in the island. So yes, maybe try. And if you really, really need good Wi-Fi, then rent an apartment. And there are some apartments opposite Hotspot, which I know have decent Wi-Fi. So maybe that's somewhere to look into. I'm not sure exactly what the apartment complex is called, but it's directly opposite hotspot. Majority of the time I went to Rethink to teach my lessons. Sometimes I had to use data, like if the Wi-Fi was down or if there were a lot of people using it. But for the most part, the Wi-Fi was decent enough. It wasn't amazing. And often there were times during my lessons where we'd have to be like, I'm so sorry, could you repeat yourself? It is what it is. I tried my best. And for the first month I was there, the Wi-Fi and Rethink was really good and then it just got worse and worse. I don't know if it was just lots of people were discovering Rethink and using it a lot more. I think that was pretty much the issue because when there weren't many people there, it was better. And then the other thing that I would recommend is that if you do need Wi-Fi, if you, for example, teach English online, I would recommend doing your lessons early morning. And I mean like early, like four or five in the morning because I used the Wi-Fi at Paradise at 4.30 till 6.30 in the morning and it was really good. At six o'clock everyone starts to wake up so they all start going on the wi-fi so I could see the quality getting a lot worse during the video call but up until 6 a.m the wi-fi at paradise was pretty decent because it was just me using it so yeah I would recommend trying to get up early if you can. In Utila there's something about the island that just makes everyone a morning person so you might be thinking oh my goodness I will not be doing that but I found it so easy to get up in Utila and I am not a morning person whatsoever. I find it so difficult to get up in the morning. So yeah, there's something about that island. So yeah, maybe try and work in the morning if you can. Okay, so then I'm going to move on to the costs of Utila now. So for breakfast, like it really depends on what kind of food you eat. You can eat breakfast for as cheap as 15 lempiras. If you eat a single baleada without any extra things in it, a single baleada, which is the tortilla, beans, and if you want cheese, then cheese. And that's 15 lempiras, which is about 50p. But then if you want to go to somewhere like Josie's or Rethink or Hotspot for breakfast, you're probably going to be looking at spending around 100, 100 to 150 lempiras, depending on if you get like breakfast and a coffee and like smoothies or whatever. Yeah, you could. I mean, you could quite easily, somewhere like Josie's, spend about 200 lempiras because you've got like the avocado toast, which is 95 lempiras. The smoothies are anywhere from, I think, 50 to 100 lempiras. So it can add up. But if you're smart with it, then I would say an average for breakfast would be around 100 lempiras. So for lunch, if you get a single valleado with avocado, for example, you would be spending 25 lempiras. But if you want to go somewhere a bit more fancy, you could spend around 150 lempiras. I would say, again, an average for lunch would be anywhere from 50 to 100 lempiras. And then for dinner, the cheapest really that you would pay for dinner is like for example, a baleada that has like veggies or well, salad in it, and that would be about 50 lempiras. You could quite easily spend 200 lempiras, uh, depending on where you go. If you get like a burger from the brewery or go to Sea Breakers for pasta or go to Mr. Buddha. And if you get drinks at these places as well, you can probably spend anywhere from 150 to 200 lempiras. So I would probably say on average, I spent 50 to 100 lempiras for breakfast each day, but then I often got cappuccinos and stuff when I was working so I ended up spending more and then 50 to 100 lempiras for lunch and then like probably about 150 lempiras for dinner. Yes, coffee in Utila costs anywhere from 20 lempiras for a black coffee. I think at Paradise it might even be 10 lempiras but I think I only had that once. Um, but yeah, roughly 10 to 20 lempiras for a 
black coffee. I think in Rethink I could get a soya cappuccino for 65 lempiras. Smoothies tend to start at about 40 lempiras if you get just like a banana smoothie. You can have it with water or milk and often they will have almond milk or soya milk as well. So yes, in Hotspot for example, you get these huge smoothies and I would always get the banana smoothie with soy milk and I'm pretty sure I only ever paid 40 lempiras for that but if you add other things like if you get strawberries because strawberries are harder to get in Utila that's 60 lempiras if you add two fruits you end up paying a little bit more so you can pay up to about 100 lempiras for a smoothie but still it's really cheap they're huge in hotspot alcohol obviously depends on what you get often you can pay about 30 lempiras for a shot or 45 lempiras for a beer or like a spirit mixed drink certain places you get free alcohol for an hour as i've mentioned in tranquila and vinyl but you can also go to the shops and buy like a pack of six beers for 120 lempiras so you end up paying like 20 lempiras per can or you can get like a bottle of rum it's very cheap rum it's not the nicest but it's it's like the local rum i can't think of what it's called but that's about like 40 lempiras for like 250 milliliters which is insanely cheap <laughs> you literally are paying a cheaper price for the rum than you are for the juice that goes with it imported sweets like skittles or m&ms or twixers or whatever other chocolate bars they have there are about 45 lempiras so they are pretty expensive because they have to import them uh, so if you fancy any chocolates from home maybe bring them with you coca-cola tends to be anywhere from 20 to 30 lempiras bananas are very cheap they're around 5 to 10 lempiras each apples are very expensive they're about 20 lempiras per apple which is about 60p per apple pretty expensive but obviously they just don't grow in utila i guess maybe it's too hot there and water for like a big bottle of water like a one to one and a half litre bottle of water i'm pretty sure i paid 20 lempiras for or you can get a grail water bottle and fill up your water from the tap i'll leave the link in the description i think a lot of the dive shops in utila do provide you with clean drinking water though so you shouldn't have to buy too much water but obviously there are cases where the water is not available or you just urgently need water if you're out and about um so yeah anywhere around like 20 lempiras for like a litre to to two liters i don't know how big those bottles are okay so then finally i'm going to go through how much i spent in utila i've sort of broken it all up into the months that i was there okay so this is not including my course and accommodation i arrived in utila on the 8th of september so between the 8th and 30th of september i spent 471 pounds 98 so that's including like every time that i got out cash that's what I added up to get that amount every time that I took out cash. So pretty much most places in Nutella you have to pay with cash. I don't think I ever really paid with card in Nutella other than the one time where I brought my mask, my mask and snorkel, which was, I paid $78 for my mask and snorkel. So that was included in my se September spending. So without that, I guess I would have spent just over 400 pounds for three and a half weeks. In the entire month of October, I spent £562.69 and then I stayed in Nutella until the 11th of November. So in November, in 11 days, I spent £111.84. So in total, I spent £1,146.41. I was in Utila for 64 days. So dividing that by 64, I spent an average of £17.91 per day. That's just on like food and leisure. That's not including accommodation and scuba courses. That £17.91 per day is including the fact that I brought a mask. So if you take out the mask, so £58, I spent a total of £1,089.51. So divide that by 64, I spent £17.02 per day. I wasn't trying to be cheap. So if you're trying to be cheap, you definitely can do Utila for a lot less than what I spent. But I tried to be cheap, I think, for like two weeks and then just got so sick of baleadas that the thought of eating another one just made me feel unwell i felt very unhealthy and i thought you know what i'm just going to spend a little bit more money maybe my trip will be a bit shorter but i'm going to spend more money so that i can actually be healthy and feel good so i stopped worrying about what i was spending so much on food and just ordered what i wanted went to the places where i wanted to eat if i wanted a cappuccino i got a cappuccino you know <laughs> like 
I wasn't so strict with myself. So yes, I probably did spend a little bit more than I probably could have. You definitely can live in Utila for very cheap. And I did not cook any of my own meals. I think, oh no, I'm lying. I think I cooked once. If you add the course and accommodation, which in total was £1,291.22, that was for two months worth of accommodation and four scuba diving courses. In total with the food, accommodation, leisure courses, everything that I spent in Utila, that is £2,380.73. So divide that by 64 is £37.20 per day, which is probably the average of what I would expect to spend per day on a backpacking trip, anywhere from like 30 to 35 pounds. So the fact that that's including four scuba diving qualifications is just insanely cheap. That is it for this video. I hope it has helped you. I know that it was a very long video, but I did want to include absolutely everything that I could about Utila so that um, when you guys are planning your trip, you know maybe which restaurant restaurants you would like to go to and yeah you can make a good plan if you're not going to be there for a long time you can use this to sort of plan your trip so give it a thumbs up if it did help you out and leave a comment if there is anything that you think I missed or if you have any questions about Utila I will be more than happy to answer them for you and yes subscribe to see more videos I will see you next time bye